Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I'm from executeautomation.com and welcome to part 9 of our understanding docker for windows video series. And in this video we'll be talking about working with file system isolations. And before watching this part, I would request you to watch part 8 since this part is going to be a complete continuation of that part. Alright, so let's get started. So what just happened in our previous video? Remember in our previous video, the part 8, we were actually running a container and once we ran a container and we, once we navigated to the disk management of our machine, we saw a new disk being created, something like this as shown below. And this disk is actually something to be done with our container and it's a completely isolated container as you see there. We also did the DIR and we saw the directories present in that particular container and that's actually coming from this particular disk. So it's called as file system isolation. So what is file system isolation? Basically it's an isolated file system by its own created for each and every containers and mounted on the host system controller as you can see it right here. So this isolation will not affect the host file system in any manner, but it uses the same file system technology of the host controller or the host system into the container file system. You can then copy a file from a host file system to the container file system as pretty much like sharing a folder between both of them. And this is really cool because if you want to copy a file from a Hyper-V virtual machine from your host machine, it will actually go through a lot of process. Basically, you do a folder being shared from your host machine and then that particular shared folder will appear into your virtual machine and then you just copy the files out from there and it's kind of slow as well. But right now, using this file system isolation technology, basically it's just mapping the particular folder into the host kernel's file system and then the container's file system and basically it's like because both of them in the same machine already, the copying of file is much faster and you can see how it basically works. So let's see this in action and understand how things work. So for that, I'm going to flip to our Windows Server 2016. So this is the one which we were working in our last video, which is part 8. And what I'm going to do once again, I just close the PowerShell session so that I can show you in a fresh manner once again to recollect as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the Docker command once again for running a image, which is nothing but the nano server image. So docker run, and then I'm gonna use what is called as an rm, and then I'm gonna say Microsoft slash nano server, and I just forgot the IT for interactive, and then I'm gonna say CMD. So once I do this, you can see instantly there is a drive being created for us in here, and let's do this dir and you can see there is a license.txt, program files and all those folders. Basically it is not coming from my C drive, it is coming from this guy, the disk1 drive. So if you want to hack this particular disk1 drive, what you can basically do is just right click in here and go to this change drive letter and path. So I'm going to do that and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cheat the container this time by assigning a letter for this guy. Let's say I'm going to assign a D colon and I'm going to hit OK. And now within your machine, if you go there, there we go. And if I go to this PC, you can see there is a D colon th this time. Basically this D colon is actually coming from this particular container. So if I open this, you can see there is a license.txt, Windows folder, users, program files, and there's a program files 86 in this one. So basically this is the same thing which we are seeing right here, right? And now within this license.txt, you can see what is there inside in here. Basically, it is coming from the container image, right? And this is what it is. So you can very easily access the file system from here. And you can do one more thing as well. Let's say if I want to copy a file from my host machine, which is nothing but my host Windows Server 2016 machine, to a containers file system, it's very simple right now. You can just copy a file from here and paste it. But if you want to share it so that you want to maintain for each and every containers, let's say you are running 10 different containers and if you want to store the log files or you want to share some of the screenshots of your images into that particular folder, then you can just share from your host machine into those controllers with just one command. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit this guy and you can see that the file system is gone, the decolon is gone right now. It's not there, also in here. 
and let's do this I'm going to do the same command and now I'm going to add a one more command this time and the command is nothing but hyphen V for the volume this command basically tells where I want to copy a folder or which folder I want to share from my host machine to the containers so I want to say I want to share a folder maybe if I go to the C colon there is an app folder and I have just put some pickle report and docker file these are something which we'll be discussing later in this course but I just put it before so that I can show it as a demonstration and now I'm gonna share this app folder let's say I'm gonna share the C colon backslash app right I'm gonna share this folder to my container so if I want to copy to a container the only delimiter that we need to use is colon so if we use this colon delimiter it means from the source path to the destination path that's it and I'm gonna say C colon because there is a C colon in the container and I'm just gonna give some name for that folder maybe some name that's it very simple right and now if I hit enter you can see that again there is a drive being created and if I go here and if I just do a dir you can see there is a sum name directory right and this time it's not a directory rather it's a sim link so it's kind of a system linked kind of directory right and there's a sum name in here and if you go just over here it says the container mapped directories so it's pretty much meaningful right now right it's a container map directory so there is nothing explanation required in here it's pretty much straightforward and there is a GUID for some special kind of name so it's kind of sharing right in here and now what if I do this if I go here to the disk and I, once again if I do the hack by just adding a derive letter maybe D colon again and if I go to my machine this PC D colon you can see there is a share shortcut kind of thing so this is basically a shortcut it's not even a shared folder if I just double click this it's not going to take you to that particular folder as you would expect which is nothing but your C colon slash app folder it's not going to happen because it is actually mapped in this way right and what if you go to this particular command and if I just go to this CD and maybe some name right and now if I just do a dir you can see there is a docker file as well as there is a pickle report folder and this is exactly the same folder which I have in my C column these two right so basically you can navigate to the docker file as well uh, pickles report as well so if I just go to the pickle report I just do dir I see all the files out from that particular directory I can make a move or I could do a copy from this particular location to my container location and I can do all those operations. basically this kind of sharing will work but you cannot actually hack around with the D colon from here and just get it because it's just a link or kind of shortcut but it's not basically the exact file being shared so this is how you can work with the file system isolation of Windows Server containers so once again guys thank you very much for watching this video and have a great day